I'm in Les Cargo today with Thomas Hitzel, Hitzelsberger, ex-international footballer, um, head of sport, director of sport at Stuttgart and CEO and now entrepreneur and campaigner. So Thomas, thanks for your time. I've got a few questions we could run through. Start off, how did you get involved with Les Cargo and um, how were you marketing it as an event venue? Well, I first came here about 10 years ago. Uh, I'd watched a Premier League game and afterwards we were invited to come here and, and immediately I felt there's something special about the place. I mean, the food was good, the service was good. But there was something he couldn't really describe. It's just I enjoy being here and I kept coming back, had similar experiences and I, I became friends with the management and ever since we stayed in touch. And a couple of years ago I was approached and they asked me whether I would be interested in investing in the restaurant. And I thought I would had time... I felt like I want to invest some money and more so become an entrepreneur because then I felt there's no excuses. Can I be successful in as an entrepreneur? Yeah. And then combining my passion for food and being in England, uh, everything came together and I said yes. What was the first meal you had that time? <laughs> that Oh God, that's a very is good it question. Still on the menu? <laughs> uh, that is a very good question. Um, I didn't have the snails that were on the menu back then, but ever since menus, they, they've changed. Yes. Uh, I can't answer that question, what I had. I can only remember the experience and that was great. And this is also still the ambition that when people come in and say, this is unique, you yes. know, the, the whole environment, all the rooms we have in combination with the food and the service, this is something you don't get very often. Yes. And when you were a professional footballer, were you interested in cuisine and cooking for yourself then? A uh, slightly different approach. I understood quite early that the, the diet is very important, has an effect on your performance. And I talked to nutritionists, uh, you know, physios and everybody involved in football. And I always had an interest in what really impact it has. Um, but I, I didn't really go out to have fa fancy meals. Um, but I, I, it was a big, big learning curve. And now I have the privilege that I don't have to be fit the next morning. Uh, <laughs> I can have more carbs than I had before. Yes. Uh, but definitely have an interest in food and go around the world. And this for me also understanding culture through food. Yes. And certainly you're right. You know, the place does have a vibe about it. So there is something special here, which mm -hmm. I, I'm sure transfers into small meetings and events. Um, you know, tell us about some of the rooms that are popular. And, and just on my brief tour around with, with your colleague Simon earlier, you know, we saw people in little nooks and crannies and they're obviously, you know, feel, feeding off the atmosphere, I think. Well, that's it. Some people come in and they expect it to be a restaurant, just a, a one-off restaurant uh, in, in the basement. But then when you go through the building up all the way to the top, there's three private dining rooms. Um, you know, and they're all, you know, depending on the size of, of the party, uh, offer something special because, yes, we have special menus for, for parties mm -hmm. in their like. Uh, different vibe here in the library, as it says, you know, this is full of books and, and, and lovely pictures and paintings. Mm -hmm. And also the collection of art that we have is, you know, it's very eclectic. Sometimes it's from artists that used to come here in the mm. past, uh, and this is something that they left for the restaurant back in the days. Yes, um, yes uh, a lot of celebrities used to come. Uh, it was was a big name, and it still is very well known. And now the challenge is to transfer it into the future, offer still quality, and make it a special place. And so far, since mm. I've been involved the last 12 months, we've had really good feedback. Yes, great. And the idea of salon-style events and discussions and tonight is the second one I believe of this series is it something you hope to continue uh, definitely it, it started um, a couple of days ago with the first event as a salon and and I really enjoyed it and yes. there was a really good group of people together um, where a it's bringing these people together uh, and for me finding a way to network with, with mm -hmm. people from the sports industry um, promoting diversity, which I've done for many, many years, yes. um, and and have this in a really nice environment. So I'm looking forward to tonight's event because looking at the guest list, again, yes. it's really stellar people I look forward to seeing. Yes. And some who haven't met before to get to know them, mm -hmm. show them the place and get to know what they're doing. Yes. And it's not the same as Tuesday's topics. That was entrepreneurialism, Correct. business events, and uh, today is diversity, diversity, diversity yes. equality and inclusion which is, apart from the, the, the core football business, something I really care about. Um, for in the last 10 years, I've been promoting diversity. And it's, it's it plays an even bigger part nowadays where football clubs have a huge responsibility, yes. the way they, they, they run their clubs. And fans from all over the world make sure everybody can participate. And we have to speak about it openly. How can we be more inclusive in football? Yes. How can everybody have an opportunity to, to be part of it? Yes. And I know we're talking about relatively exclusive smaller events here but events in particular 
in Germany, the, the mess and the exhibition centers are dynamic drivers of economic growth um, in your home country as well as uh, elsewhere. It's a particular model, though, in Germany. Mm -hmm. um, do you think there's a different attitude to business events in Germany compared with the UK? Well, I'm only beginning to understand the whole landscape of you know these these events in, in my world now doing it here at the restaurant. But as you just mentioned, the, mm. the, the trade shows in Germany, I touched on it often. I went to the Frankfurt the Buchmesse, you know, yes. all about literature, which I've really enjoyed. And uh, I was at the last one in Leipzig because I've published yes. my first book uh, in in Germany. And had a. What was the title, if I may? Ask? It's called Mutproven. So, like being courageous, and it's related to me coming out 10 yes. years ago, uh -huh. uh, but also to continuously, you know, doing sort of brave things and, and not being held back by sometimes society, what people expect of you. Yes. And it's not me having done one thing in my life and then live of it, but continuously challenge myself, leaving my comfort zone. And that's another example why I've taken over the restaurant because it's not an easy business. Yes. I push myself and say, I need to learn yeah. and understand what's going on in order to, yes. to be successful. You clearly have a big dynamo and appetite and a leader. You know, you were captain, I believe, under 19 national team. Uh, so this leadership drive, it's something that um, you're obviously keen to pursue with entrepreneurial projects. It is indeed because I was just lucky enough that with my football career when I was young, um, I wanted to become a professional football player and I've, I've achieved that goal. But then your career, my career was over uh, at the age of 31. Mm -hmm. And then I really thought about what do I want to do next in my life and I had a really good starting point. Um, and I grew into it saying, I just don't want to lean back and yes. say I had a good career and tell the whole world for the next 30 years I had a good career and show my goals. But challenge myself again and use those uh, things I've learned in football yeah. to to become successful in something else. And this is where I'm now. I'm still, you know, exploring things and, and taking on different challenges. Not everything is successful, but I think with more experience yes. and challenges you, you face, the better you become. Yes. And would you agree that, you know, football is a great connector with local communities? I'm sure you've seen the Wrexham documentary that the Americans yeah. did. And it really showed, I thought, you know, how a community, how football is important to that. Well, it is. I always felt it when I was playing, but it wasn't so talked about it so much. Um, nowadays, it's something clubs are facing. There is to have that responsibility uh, for the community, the yes. city they live in, yes. um, to look after people because so much money goes into football. And I think it would be just unfair to give it to very few people. So reach out, do good uh, for the community. And that has grown over the years, and which I think is very, very good because football is a beautiful game. But with all the money coming in, it needs to look after people who aren't as well off. Yes. And it seems appropriate that the, the major clubs that you played for in England are all what I would call people's club clubs, Aston Villa, West Ham, Everton, you know, that's very important, isn't it? You know, people sometimes invest so much of their lives into the club, and it means an awful lot. Yeah, that's why it was very important for me to to switch sides after my career yeah. to work for my former club Stuttgart in different capacities. I was the academy director, and then director of football and, and CEO. And then you have you oversee the whole complexity of a football mm -hmm. club and understand how many people you reach and and how much time people devote yes. for your club, and then. I was able, hopefully, to, to tell you know the players and various other people that uh, you know this is so important what we're doing. It's important what we say in public because people are listening yeah. carefully. And going back to the question with the clubs in England I played for, they all have that in common. Yes, they understand mm -hmm. they are there for the community. Yes, they want to win football matches, and it's really important. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, they have people they they want to look after. Yes, and um, tell us a bit more about um, promoting the DEI in sports and why we need to do that you know who is who is being excluded in this drive for inclusivity well for many years it, it, it wasn't something we talked about it yeah. but I am probably the most authentic when I talk about my own story and I said yeah. I've come out publicly 10 years ago more or less and towards the end of my career when it was clear to me and I, I couldn't deny the fact that I was gay and I thought, okay, I don't have a place in football. And whenever the, the conversation came about being different, being gay, it was like, no, there's no place mm -hmm. for gay football players. And that was really sad because I, I loved football at the time. Yeah. I still love it. And if there are people that think just because of the fact mm -hmm. that I'm gay, I shouldn't participate in football, 
then I just disagree with it. And that's something that needs to be discussed. And that's just one element of diversity. Yes. Uh, but I'm trying to focus on that because people who are not in that position, people who are you know, male and, and white and never have been part of a minority, they just don't understand the difficulties people are going through. Yes. We talk about racism, homophobia, sexism, and that's something fortunately today mm. where we get a platform to, to discuss these issues. Yes. And would you think that uh, a venue such as this is, is an ideal hothouse for bringing people together to not just ordinary people, but you mentioned earlier the speed of the networking that goes on and the quality of, of discussions here? You know, it's an ideal chemistry. That's it. clearly the ambition here. Yeah. Uh, bring in um, people in here that really care about the same that I want to talk about in, in this environment and then connecting people and, and creating change again because sometimes it's exactly that that some people are in the room and I think like why haven't we met before yes. and and yes. this as as a as a you know salon that we do um, in, in a really nice environment to say okay everybody leaves the room happily yes. and start new conversations and in, in the best case um, you know friendships begin mm -hmm. and, and their drive of change in in the football environment or in society in general. Yes. Well, I think with the events industry, Thomas, you know, there are plenty of people, entrepreneurs, who think they're celebrities, but it's a real pleasure to meet a real one. Thank you, <laughs> well, thank thank you, you very much. much. Thank you, Paul. <laughs>